And my opponent chooses quite a uh, tame line here, I would say. Pawn is pinned, so I can just add another attacker. I just hunkered down here and calculated pretty deeply. All right, welcome to today's video. Um, today is the final round of the tournament that I played on Monday, three days ago. Um, yeah, I'm against the highest rated player in my section. I believe he was 1705, uh, something like that. It might not be his exact rating, but he was something around 1705. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I had black, uh, so e4, c5, playing the Sicilian. Knight f3, knight c6, and e, uh, d4. This is the open Sicilian, um, so I take, take, and play g6. I play the accelerated dragon Sicilian. And my opponent chooses quite a uh, tame line here, I would say. Um, and he plays c3. Now, computer already calls it inaccurate, but it's only a very slight uh, advantage for black now. So I play knight out to f6, attacking at the pawn, and kind of just taking over the center uh, with initiative. So bishop to d3, protecting the pawn. And now I I play d5. Um, it's not the best move, but I'm like, okay, I may as well take the center since his pieces kind of look funny and I don't know. Something about three pieces being on the d-file just yells at me to open it, so that's what I did. Shepard takes, I did... Knight takes d4, doubling his central pawns. I saw queen a4 and I thought he was going to go for that, um, but I still thought I was okay. So, uh, yeah, then I took on d5. Notice there is no good check here since I just block with the bishop and knight and queen both protect. So after castles, bishop g7, knight to c3. I just move my queen all the way back to d8, uh, kind of like in the Scandinavian opening. And here is when my opponent decides to go for the checks, but I just block with my bishop and I'm never really in trouble here, even with queen to a4, um, because notice I have two pieces defending, so my king doesn't even need to be here, so I just castle. Um, so yeah, bishop takes now and I take with the knight, since I don't really want to trade queens, even though trading queens here is probably better, since now uh, the isolated queen pawn will just be a very easy target for the rest of my pieces because uh, I control the square in front of it especially with uh, e6 incoming um, so yeah I probably should have traded the queens here to make it a little bit easier on myself but I kept pieces on the board with knight takes and I still have an advantage so nothing too uh, too much to worry about here so here I just transfer my knight over to b6 uh, rather than going back to knight f6 blocking my bishop I control the center this way and move it to b6 with tempo. Um, yeah. So yeah, queen back to uh, b4 is a little bit weird. Um, I just play e6 here, trying to control the square in front of the isolated queen spawn, um, which is what you're supposed to do against a pawn that's isolated with no uh, neighboring pawns supporting it. So that's what I did. And notice how I have just very good control of the square, and I think I move my queen out of the way here, and I should probably just put my knight on c7 immediately, since I just take back with the queen as well. And yeah, it just would have been much better to play knight d5 here. Uh, I'm not quite sure why I did not do that, but uh, yeah, th this is fine as well. So yeah, rook, rook c1, and I play rook to d8, trying to further control my... Uh, Further control the d d5 square in front of the pawn. So now my opponent plays knight to e5, thinking he has a nice cool discovery. Um, I didn't really care, it doesn't actually do anything. Notice how he's not actually attacking anything. So I just very simply play queen to d7, further controlling the d5 square. And now my opponent plays bishop to um, uh, bishop g5, which I thought was all right. It doesn't really do anything. So I proceeded to put my knight on d5, and notice that it does not hang a rook since I am attacking his queen. Also this pawn is defended, so nothing really to worry about here. Alright, continuing on. Uh, so yeah, queen back to d2. Um, 
this just kind of just puts the queen behind everything. Nothing too spectacular about this move. So I move my rook out of the way and play rook c8, looking to trade some rooks against this isolated queen's pawn. Usually it's the right idea, so that's what I do. Takes, rook takes, and I play rook c8. Bishop takes g7, and I decide to keep it simple here with king takes g7. And I just have a very clean advantage here. So after takes, queen takes. Now I just have control of the c file, um, and my opponent here plays g3. I assume to like stop any shenanigans over here, give him, give uh, his king some luft. So nothing really to worry about here. And I play b6, trying to stop his knight from coming in to c5, which is like the strongest for, square for his knight. So I think it's the best move. So the knight goes back to c3, and I play queen to c4. Um, again, I just have a very steady advantage here. Um, and the reason why this is a good move is because it attacks the pawn and also it uh, reinforces my knight. Once he takes, I can take this way. And now I actually have a fork here. If you look very carefully, I do have a fork here. Um, but my opponent can counter it by like trying to get his queen pretty active. But he doesn't see it and he tries to defend the a pawn with b3. And the reason this is such a big inaccuracy, and it's the reason why I won the game, is because the pawn is pinned, so I can just add another attacker with e5. Now, this is pinned to the queen, he can't take, there's no way to get out of it, um, so he makes another big inaccuracy here, which is f4, um, which the idea kind of makes sense, um, but it just doesn't work quite that well. So I give a check, takes, takes, and takes, I'm up a pawn, and his entire idea is go this way, and I follow with king f6. Um, I actually didn't quite see his idea immediately, but I knew it was all right for any for me anyways. Um, I thought he was going to go this way, so I would just follow like that. But I didn't see that his idea was this. So now, uh, if I go here, he has g4, deflecting my king away, and then now he has uh, king to e4 to win the pawn. So yeah, my opponent plays king to uh, f3, and I I just hunkered down here and calculated pretty deeply. Um, so here's what I calculated. I calculated d3, king over, king f5, takes here. He can't follow because I'm faster, um, and I'm gonna win another pawn. So his only real idea here is to go this way and try and like promote this way. But I calculated all the way, all the way over here. I calculated all of this, um, sorry. Calculated all of this and I am winning by essentially, what, one tempo, two tempo. But I calculated all of this. Um, it's, it's not actually that hard. It's only uh, 10 moves, but they're basically like, there's only one path to go down. So it's not really that complicated to calculate that deep there. So I went ahead and played D3, calculating all that. It's the best move, um, which is good to know since <laughs> I calculated that deep pretty accurately, I suppose, being that it is the best move. So after King to E3, I play King to F5, my entire idea. And after H3, I was like, okay, let's see, he's threatening. He wants to go g4, I assume, and try to kick my king away from that side of the board. So I simply play h5, great move apparently, um, which stops his entire idea. But uh, he plays king back to f3, which is inaccurate. Um, king, the computer calls it excellent because he's already completely losing, but it, it's, it's inaccurate because he, he walks away from the pawn. So now I push it one more square, he plays uh, g4, take, take, and I play king back to e6. And the reason it's inaccurate is because now he has to go chase the pawn. So now I can run my king around to these pawns and uh, they are unprotected so I can just take them. So he, he plays f5, which is kind of desperate. Um, so I just take, take, and take out of a pawn. And this pawn is so far away from everything else that I can kind of just run towards his pawns. Um, I play a5 to cement this pawn in place, by the way. And now he goes back this way. So he's trying to prevent this pawn, but I just simply go towards his pawns. 
and once I played king b4, he resigned. Since once he protects, I can just push up the board, distract his king, win both these pawns, and very simply promote. So yeah, very uh, interesting endgame. Uh, it kind of just all ended on me winning at pawn. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was just a subpar opening by white, uh, which got him into an isolated queen's pawn position. Um, and I think I handled it pretty well. And for my accuracy, which I'm, I'm about to read, you will uh, see that I played this perfectly. I played it a perfect game, essentially. It, literally a perfect game. My opponent had an accuracy of 87.0, um, and I had an accuracy of 97.1. So good job to me. No inaccuracies, no mistakes, no misses, no blunders. So that's that's very nice to see. Um, yeah, very very good to see. Estimated ratings. Um, my opponent had an estimated rating of 2050, very respectable, and I had an estimated rating of 2500, which, as you may know, is grandmaster level performance. So good job to me. Uh, yeah, but this tournament went very well. I won all my games. I gained 75-ish ratings, so now I am uh, upper 1700s rather than uh, upper 1600s, so it's very nice to see. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching today's video, don't forget to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.